And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. I figure I give you a little holiday treat tonight. Also, I was feeling a little bit nostalgic right now. So tomorrow on Independent Riders, we're going to be talking about how a lot of things have changed since the day that we came up compared to the way it is now. It's going to be something special, man. It's all independent biker related. We're not going to be talking about the clubs back then because quite frankly, it's a lot more funner to talk about the independent stuff, man, because independent bikers are the true scooter tramps, man. They know how to put on the mileage, so we're going to have some fun with that. We'll be right back. We are now simulcasting on Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube. That is the way the independent writers will be shown as well tomorrow. In St. Throttle wants to welcome back Shaggy. Yes, Pound Uncle Shaggy is back in the house again. Love that stuff. If you guys want MC Protocol stuff, you're going to want to go to him as well. You know, as far as the 1% stuff, and then you have Black Dragon. Those are really the only two that I recommend you guys go and get your advice. So let's jump back in the time machine. I had to actually do this earlier. I was listening to Shaggy's video today. And again, he put one out. He did. He actually figured out how to do a live video session. That is awesome. Congrats, man. He went back to school to learn how to do. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he did uh, do a live. One thing that caught my attention was his argument that this is the place where you reach people now. I have to agree. I do have to agree and get out of, you know, the 90s thinking, if you will. A lot of things were different back then. I consider more fun than it is today. A lot of people nowadays are like tight ass and stuff like that. It, it, they don't understand how to have some fun in life. Boy, did we know how to have fun back then. Uh, you can uh, ask China now that one, man. Uh, yeah, she lives through some hell with that. The way men looked at women back in that time period is a lot different than we look at them now. You got to remember the 90s biker was brought up by the Vietnam air biker. We're talking, those were some hardcore boys right there. Hardcore boys. A lot of what they taught us was you had to be a man. And how you be a man was you had to make sure that you asserted your dominance, if you will. It wasn't until I'd have to say, I don't know, mid-2000s that you finally started to see women riding motorcycles more. Actually, I got to confess, I do. It wasn't for the last couple years that I finally got over the fact that a woman would ride a motorcycle. Because before then, we would look at them a whole different different way now you guys that are my age and older understand that what i'm talking about uh they were of the uh male testosterone type if you will uh the women that used to ride back in the 90s because it was unheard of being a biker was a man's world it still is to some extent today but not as much as it was it those days yeah not as much as it was you never seen a woman 
hardly riding a motorcycle. They were always in the back. Your place basically as a woman in the 90s was get in the corner, shut up. We don't want to hear from you. All you do is cause problems. Other than that, it's good if you get on your knees. Just saying that's the way we looked. I guess the male species has evolved since then. Now it's more of a partnership. And I'm not saying, you know, the regular squares, uh, you know, the regular civilian life wasn't like that. I'm talking a, just specifically the biker life. That's how we thought. That was the time when it was not cool to be a biker. Oh, hell no. It was not cool whatsoever back then to be a biker. You were looked upon as trash. The cops hated you more so then than they do, you know, now. Because one thing I never understood, and I had to wrap my head around this to get a grasp, is you always had that straight line. And you've heard of me talk about this on my stuff. You had a straight line. You never crossed the line over to supporting the blue badge. Because quite frankly, what they used to do back then was pull you over. You didn't have to have a patch, by the way. They would pull you over and throw your ass in the dirt. And next thing you know, they're running this, they're running that. They're getting all freaking uh, handsy on you. Then... 1994 came and that is the year that we call the rub invasion before then you want to talk about the price of Harleys it was a lot cheaper everybody could afford a Harley then 94 came in and then what happened was Harley, it's kind of like what they're doing today. They're restricting the inventory at the dealership. So the price of the bike goes up. Harley's pushing a lot of CVOs right now. Well, back then, it had to do with, well, the fat boy came out because of that Terminator film. You had a lot of influx from those that had money, and Harley Davidson seen an opportunity at that point in time to say, well, you nasty ass bikers, you've already served your worth. We wrote off of your image. We made the company off of your backs, but now it's time to say, see you later. Goodbye. We don't need you. That happened in 94. There was, and that's where rubs and all that started to come from. Anyway, they were not a huge part of the scene at that point in time. You still had your snaggly ass, dirty shirt, dirty pants, greasy beard biker. Still running the things and how things used to be. Now, you're talking about how a rally was in the 1990s compared to today. Oh, boy. I wish you guys could take a time machine. I really do. I wish you could take a time machine back then and seen how rallies really were. I can guarantee you that there were no painted titties at them rallies. There was actually a lot more that was happening at them rallies. It was freewheeling. If you ever seen the old uh, Iron Horse Outlaw Biker Mags or Rags, whatever you want to call them, you would see the debauchery that was going on at them rallies. And that's why I was kind of surprised when they canceled Easy Riders in Chillicotti because it was a lot more worse decades ago than it is today but that's because of a tight ass sheriff who wants to be a prick and show the size of his pecker that's why it was canceled because again it was a lot worse we there used to be some partying the major rallies weren't as big 
because we would all stay local. We'd stay in the woods, party all weekend. And that's kind of why Insane Throttle started the Rumble in the Woods for the Insane Throttle members. So you can have your harken back to that time where it was cheap. You weren't spending, you know, two weeks worth of pay on a rally to sponsors who really didn't care about you. That's kind of why we did it was just for that reason alone. And the next rumble in the woods I'm thinking is in uh, September, September brain fart there. Our first rally that we're going to be doing is the a bait of Iowa freedom rally. Uh, that's uh, June 30th through the 2nd. I encourage all you guys can, uh, uh, to come out there and see a party. It's on private land. It's 21 and up. All kinds of biker gangs, or not gangs, games happen in my fault. Boy, am I going to get a freaking emails of hate on that one. Anyway, <laughs> Algonia, it's supposed to be a real good rally. Uh, we're going to have a creator's roundtable there. We're going to have uh, independent riders going to be there. Everybody, I think, is going to be there. Uh, Shaggy, as of now, is going to be there. We're going to have Black Dragon up there. It's going to be a whole, you know, good experience. So make sure you get up there. So let's get back to the way everybody thought back then. Actually, it would be a foreign idea to people now of how everything was thought of. Because what happened was there's a flip from the dirty, grungy biker to to the fashion, you know, conscience to, you know, the PC type of mind thinking that there is today. And that flip, I would have to say, was around 2007, 2008. We all know happened at that time. Then, boom, everything got thrown out of whack. At the same time, women started entering in and changing the dynamic, the way everybody thought of how things were supposed to be done and you got now and you wonder where all the fun is gone y you really do you wonder where all the fun is gone and one of the things that ed just put in the comment section the biggest difference is technology technology showed the world hidden lifestyles which brought it to the attention of normie and made them pay attention to help fix the life of those very well said right there like i said i listened to shaggy's thing today where he talked about this is where you reach the new up-and-coming biker if you will and he's right because if you look at society as a whole right now Kids don't leave their bedrooms. Kids don't get off an Xbox. And kids sure to hell don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to communicate in person. So by that thinking, yes, this is the perfect platform to get a hold of them. Which does present a problem. Us older guys, one thing we believed in was your word. Your word translated to the amount of honor you had and so on. See, that was my downfall now, was trusting the word of somebody and that whole debacle with, uh, what's her name, uh, happened with uh, National Geographic. It's not taken that serious nowadays because most of the time you're talking over Facebook Messenger, you're talking over text, so you don't see that person in front of you. And what they're going to think is, well, wait a second, you know, who cares? We were talking on Messenger, we were talking on text. I don't have to do what I said I'm going to do. 
that wasn't the way back then. Oh, hell no. When you gave your words, you did it. You stuck to it. There was no way around doing what you were supposed to do. It ain't like that. And I, I love, and you know, somewhat I have to agree. Because you have a lot of people that say, hey, man, you got to come into the 21st century. Okay, cool. It is what it is. But at the same time, don't you think you should have a basic foundation as a man? Meaning, if you give your word, do it. Or if you screw up, admit it and apologize for it. That right there is, see, that's foreign, not, I could never do that. If I screwed up and I can't and admit it, that's messed up. Because, you know, I've screwed up this past year in stories. So you admit it, take responsibility for it. But at the same time, I see a lot of other creators knowing damn well what's going on in the background, not admit it. So I chalk it up to, okay, different generation. But is it right to have to make excuses for people just because you're supposed to come into the 21st century? No. I thought that was a basic premises of being a man was knowing how to back your word, back who you are as a person. One thing that's really been lost on a lot of people. I blame that on my generation. At least the Vietnam generation taught us that very simple fact. Our generation didn't pass crap down to the younger ones and we wonder what's going on. But going back to what Ed said with the technology, we're actually seeing where my age demographic on Insane Throttle is usually 35 to over 60. That's mid-middle age and up in years. I don't have much, maybe 2% of the audience is below 35 and that is concerning and i can see why motorcycle manufacturers are having such a hard time because they do have to break through to these younger ones to get them to buy their products but how do you do that is the question yes i see creators being brand ambassadors which is great stuff because that's really how they're going to be able to reach them is on YouTube or on Instagram. So they do have a big problem there. I'm getting covered here. I'll read this. Vern, men were men, women were women, and people on scoots didn't call themselves or each other bikers. This was all created by the citizens, the label. Then motorcycles became and ruined the scene. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> everything's interesting uh the left sees bikers as a threat because it teaches you how to be a man not a soy boy <laughs> if you ever go on the morning hoop in the mornings you can see some of my ideology come out and boy do i feel for china now a lot because my ideology does come, you know, it's a, hey, wait a second. You're a woman. What are you trying to put? Is one thing that always aggravated me. And I think it aggravates me still to today is when a woman tells a man, what's up? Uh, it's foreign to me as it should be a lot of men is you're supposed to be wearing the pants. What are you doing? So respect is another thing that really lacks with people nowadays. You got to have respect for yourself. I get it. You're in love. Cool. 
but there was rules when you left the house that a woman understood. It ain't like that no more. Uh, young folks ain't in the bikes. Well, Brian, you're entirely correct there. A lot of them aren't. Well, unless you're playing GTA 5, you know, they play biker on that. But going back to respect, it's almost, again, a foreign word to a lot of people. When you left the house with the woman, they knew their place. They knew when to talk, and I'm talking independence, man. Again, I ain't talking about club stuff. If you want to hear about club stuff, go to Shaggy, go to Black Dragon. You'll hear it on Biker News with me in a new sense. Other than that, when I talk, it's independent stuff. Even at the rallies, they knew how to act. Because when you're at rallies, there's a lot of drinking, there's a lot of smoking, there's a lot of stuff going on. You're there to have fun and you don't want to watch your back because so, your old lady's shoving her uh, tits in somebody's face. Because next thing you know, you're into some crap right there. So, yeah, they knew the boundaries. Today, not so much, though, I don't think. You see, I've seen anyway, some stuff that actually blows your mind where you'll have an old lady going around shoving her tits in everybody's face, hanging on them. And then next thing you know, you're looking like a schmuck because your old lady's about to turn tricks for free. At least back then, if that was happening, at least you would have got paid for them tricks. Not now. It's not happening. Not now. <laughs> uh, yeah, by the way, the process will be on tomorrow's show. What's up, Gio? He has a YouTube channel. He's just getting uh, started. So he's going to be able to get in on this conversation. Uh, I have guys in their 50s, upper 50s coming on the show. And again, they're going to give their thoughts on what they think the difference is. Because they might have went to the, you know, came from the 80s there. Or they might have came from the 70s there. But one thing I think is important is everybody's talking about this new school stuff. Well, take some of the old traditions with you. Like one, the top thing, honor your word. It's always funny when you see people sign stuff, L and R or LLR. And it's like, even that has become just like the word brother. Everybody calls somebody that. Here's my suggestion for you. Call them Homer. I call everybody Homer. Because brother is supposed to be reserved for those you're very close to. It ain't about, hey, brother, what's up on the internet? No, it's, hey, what's up, Homer? That's what I do. <laughs> uh, Yammer Hammer. Sturgis 50th was the end of the culture. Oh, my God. The stories we used to hear out of Easy Riders, uh, Biker Rag, Outlaw Biker, about Sturgis. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, the pictures they used to print. Now, Easy Riders is supposed to be coming out with the original version December 1st. We'll see how it, you know, it goes. I think they learned their lesson about turning their backs on your core customers and your readers. So, again, we'll see how that goes. And that's one of the things that were different then was we didn't have the Internet for news. All our news came from Easy Riders or it came from Outlaw Biker. It came from magazines where you actually had to go to the 7-Eleven and you had to drop five bucks down to get the magazine. And that's where you would learn about the bike builds, the different events that were happening. And it's kind of sad because them formats are really cool where Easy Riders, for example, you had your David Mann spreads. Every old biker had it on his garage. 
internet you can't do that cool stuff man you really can't you can't do that stuff let's take out a spread of a hot chick with some big tits and put it on the garage that's one thing i miss for these new kids man i really miss it for them is that kind of joy the working on the bikes together after a hard day's work was another fun deal or going out and partying there used to be a place where i was at and we all lived together you know with different apartments but we were all there it was like a 24 7 party and there was a creek in back every night after work you'd see us out there burning wood getting high drinking having fun not having a care in the world yeah you have to get your responsibilities done but after that man it was you lived a life 24 7. i was actually blessed where i learned tattooing early on in my uh deal and i was a tattoo artist own shops stuff like that so i was blessed to be around the lifestyle see 90s it was still going to the shop pick whatever you want off the wall we'll tattoo it and get the hell out of here hell we were still smoking in the shop until hell 2008 or something like that still smoking up lighting up because the only people that got tattoos back then were bikers convicts military it wasn't mainstream like it is today I have to say, I have to admit, the kids that tattoo nowadays, they throw down, man. But back then, all we were were glorified uh, Xerox copyright machines or whatever it is. Because you just pick it off the wall, throw the stencil on, do your thing, get the hell out of here. My first one was, it had to be 1988. I got my first tat underage of course brought in the c ray ray's tattoo out of elgin he was a member of the du two deuces hardcore biker club that eventually went wheelman and then to the one percent club but i was exposed to it at real early age so i got the tattoo made my deal then moved up in different businesses so it's always been a 24 seven thing with me and now I'm blessed because you guys, I'm able to do this all the time. I think that if you brought back and taught kids that are coming up about honor, about loyalty, about respect, you could have everything that we had but better hell you guys got cell phones when our ass broke down we got on our walking boots and walked 10 miles to a damn pay phone that was one thing i don't miss breaking down and hitting the pay phone 10 15 miles away because you were gonna probably send your old lady because i wouldn't freaking leave my bike and you had to be there it was a whole day event if you couldn't fix it yourself hell i feel sorry for those that uh break down now with these 2021s with all this damn electronics outlaw preacher i miss the bike game slow races hill climbing the events revolved around bikes i was a teenager but it hooked me you're gonna see you're gonna see uh some uh biker games over at algonia at the freedom fest party in iowa you'll see that stuff i am kind of disappointed the hill climbs ain't around like they used to be uh those were always cool you made a big weekend out of those events and it wasn't about all the money it was throw your rack and a lot of people probably guarantee anybody under 30 don't know what rack means 
you threw your rack, you slept next to your bike, you got up, you partied, you got drunk again the next day. And in the meantime, you're hoping for a lot of loving from the honeys. If you were lucky and you weren't ugly, you probably got two or three that weekend. And if you were real lucky, you got them at the same time. Just saying. <laughs> uh, little Paul, it was taken away for your safety. What was for my safety? Let me know that. Yeah, we didn't wear, worry much about safety either, man. Y you guys, I was talking to China Dow the other day. And she said, you can't even ride a bicycle without a helmet now. And it's true. You see these 40-year-olds running around with these goofy-looking shorts, wearing these goofy-looking helmets on a bicycle. That wasn't us, man. We survived the 1980s, man. We used to put plywood, have one of our friends hold it, and jump on our bicycles <laughs> uh during the freedom rally just south uh where is this uh of there are the humbled harley drags rock on rock on man i have to go see that uh, i know i was some good riding i've been up to uh, what is it uh duluth or des moines something like that uh I don't remember squares being 50 cents. I remember when uh, packs were $1.10. Uh, back then, uh, let's see here. Back then, working on a bike meant getting greasy, tweaking a shovel head for more power or speed meant taking something apart. You adjusted valves, time, and gap. Now you download the upgrades. Oh, my God. You know what? Here's something you do. And Shaggy brought this up. It is the oldest trick in the book. Take some points and show them to somebody that is like 20, 21 years old. Just take the points and ask them what it is. I guarantee you they're not going to know what them are. Hell. Hell. If you handed them a carburetor, they probably wouldn't know what it is. And they sure to hell probably wouldn't know how to build one or rebuild a carburetor. Hell, it was just uh, recently, uh, two years ago, I finally got over the carburetor crap, got the fuel injection on the boulevard. And when I went and got the Dyna, I said, hell yeah, give me that fuel injection. I don't know what I'm missing here. I don't know what the hell was wrong with me. And then I went and got uh, a helmet with one of them intercoms with a radio. I was like, damn, man, these guys have it going on. The problem is I still, because I used to be like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to ride with a, a stereo. What the hell are you riding with a stereo for? Uh, yeah, listening to music's pretty cool. I learned my lesson there. I still don't understand why you guys on baggers are spending five, six thousand dollars on these stereo systems for the rest of the world to hear. I get it. I get it. It's a craze among you know people now. But come on, five thousand on a pair of freaking speakers and an amp? Something's wrong with you guys. I could imagine putting you guys. On an old, say, well, shovel head or an iron head, a chopper, a hard, uh, hard tail, uh, and you guys wouldn't know what to do, man. You wouldn't know what to do. Now, turn around like the old fellas did and ride them damn bikes a thousand miles in a day. You want to talk about iron, bud? Try to add on a hard tail. Uh, let's see here. Jim Grady at Angry Boomer. Yeah, number one reason I could never ride on an electric bike. I love the grease, smell of gas, exhaust, and the noise of all the springs and leather. Hell yeah, man. Well, you forgot to add in there to the smell a taco, if you know what I mean. Pink taco. As long as it don't smell too much like tuna, that's where you have to do that finger test and stuff, you're good. Uh, other than that, Stay away from it, man. It's probably got some letters that uh, never leave you. Uh, seriously, it'll never leave you. 
<laughs> and women knew how to treat a man. I think I'll end with that. Women knew how to treat a man back then. They took care of them like they were the kings, like they should be treated. Men are the kings of the castle. Point blank. No ifs, ands, or buts. If you want to be a queen, you better know how to treat a guy like a king. Because if you don't, you ain't no queen. Inside is was the women's chores. That's what we believe. Outside were the men. Unless you're picking up dog crap, then, hey, you do that too, because I ain't doing that crap. Ain't happening. I'm just saying. Uh, Silver Ghost used to call the hardtails kidney uh, flippers for a reason. <laughs> we called them kidney busters, but you got that right. <laughs> Uh, Maximo Overdrive, I'll take a couple of your questions. Not knocking them, but I don't run a stereo on my bike. Just another distraction I don't need. A lot of, uh, I have to agree, man. It is kind of distracting, uh, but at the same time, it's pretty cool if it's lower. Uh, like I said, on tomorrow's Independent Riders at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, or if you missed it, you can replay it just like this one. We'll have J-Man on, we'll have Dark Soul on, uh, Bedlam, Star, and we're going to go more in-depth uh, you know, with this subject, what their thoughts are, because they're from different parts of the country. Hey, we might have looked at something from a Midwest star, uh, standpoint, but what about the East Coast? What about the West Coast? What about the South? What about the Southwest? How did all them look at it? And I think that's what a good round table is going to be uh, about. Not Bly Dragons, ours is get into different perspectives. Say like, well, wait, uh, wait a second. Did you guys think the same way we thought about women here in the Midwest back then? Uh, what do you think about? a woman trying to be an equal with a man. You know, those are going to be topics that we're going to be bringing up uh, tomorrow. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, let's see here. I still will not run a windshield outlaw preacher. That's S and S or SSW custom sewing rock and roll me. I, I got over that. I think as you age, you say, screw this man. I put in all the miles in the winter. I've rode in the uh, snow. I've rode where it felt like it's below zero. I done all the camping on the side of the bike on the ground. Hell no, man. You get older, man. Your bones start crickling and cracking and doing all kinds of stuff. And you're like, damn, man, what is that? Did I break another kneecap or something? Uh-uh. I earned my rust. That's what I say. Oh. <laughs> uh, Geo, my man. For King Rides, I use a detachable shield. Rock on. Rock on. What do you guys think about windshields and stuff? Uh, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget that we uh, give us some help on Instagram. Get us the 10,000 followers. Uh, that would be cool if you to do that. I just put the link in the, the comment section and all that good stuff. Uh, let's say here, bikes were not as powerful as ca or capable. That's one thing I really like about now is the dependability of a Harley has gotten a lot better. Uh, they don't piss and leave their marks hardly anymore if you take care of them anyway, like uh, the old shovels and the old irons did. Personally, I believe the Evo is the best engine that Harley made. You guys might disagree. Might go panhead, knuckle, uh, the nostalgic stuff. I think it was the Evo. There's nothing worse than that. I had that with my, because my first bike was a 77 Bonneville. And I couldn't stand when walking out there and seeing oil. Now, you hardly don't see that except for the old stuff. And I think, uh, <laughs> hold on a second. Rule business today. My 42 year old iron head was never had a windshield riding her the last 20 years, man. To kick ass, man. Kick ass. That's awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. 
anyway guys again watch us uh tomorrow you'll get more insight how you doing cliff you'll get more insight and all that stuff from the older guys than me on what they think about the difference between the generations are a lot of good uh cool conversation that you guys enjoy the rest of your night man happy that you guys came aboard i know it was a last minute deal eh, it's better than sitting around doing nothing right <laughs> anyway guys i'll talk to you later have a good one rock on at the insane throttle tv app on roco now get content not seen on our other platforms no censorship no pc only biker fun and entertainment it's hot core again go over to roco tv and add the insane throttle tv app now bye guys